אני דיור אניתי every hour אניתי oh bless me now my savior I come to to the I need the old I need the every hour I need the oh bless me now my savior I come to to the good morning praise the Lord praise the Lord good morning good morning good morning God bless you God bless you lady holding God bless you sister Simmons God bless you Sylvia God bless you sister Janice God bless you Regina, God bless you, Sister Underwood. God bless you, Sister Bryant. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Bernadette. Bernadette, I'm sorry. God bless you, Sister Judy. God bless you, Sister Hedrick. God bless you, Sister Ford. God bless you, Sister Lee. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Francine. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you, Mother Morris. God bless you, Pastor Alding. Thank God for you, sir. God bless you, Brother Javon. God bless you, Thomasina. God bless you, Sister Wiggins. God bless you, Valencia. Good morning. God bless you, Nikki. God bless you, Sister Sessions. God bless you, Mother Foster. God bless you, Sister Wright. God bless you, Sister Stokes. God bless you, Sister Sylvia. Thank God for you. God bless you, Candace. Good morning. Well, praise God and good morning, everybody, and welcome to another morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. It is once again a pleasure and an honor, first of all, to be alive. It's a blessing to be alive. It's a blessing to be, as they say, in the land of the living. And I'm grateful <clears throat> to the Lord for his goodness and his mercy in my life, all that the Lord is all that he does and all that he is doing. And I praise God today for the grace of God, the grace of God that keeps us and carries us and leads us day by day. If it was not for the Lord who was on our side, the enemy surely would have swallowed us up. But we are blessed and we are favored today and we are thankful today for all that the Lord has done and all that he is in our lives. Um, as always, if you have a prayer request, you can send it or place it in the chat, or you can um, send it if it's of a private nature to Reginald Davis um, to my inbox. And as always, we take the prayer request before the Lord in prayer. God bless you, Bishop Joseph. Thank God for you, sir. God bless you, Pastor Jackson. I want to go to the Word of God today, um, it, which is found in the Gospel of St. John. I want to hopefully begin concluding this 17th chapter. Um, and we're going to begin at verse number 20, St. John chapter 17 and verse 20. And we're going to read through the conclusion of chapter 17. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which should believe on me through their word, that they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and has loved me as thou has, has loved them rather as thou hast loved me. Father, I will 
that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may be may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known me, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. We're still talking about the prayer of Jesus Christ. And as I shared a couple of days ago and on yesterday, we normally call the Our Father Prayer the Lord's Prayer. But this is really the biblical prayer of Jesus Christ because it's the prayer that the Son prayed to the Father. And it shows the shift of Jesus from rabbi to intercessor because he is about to leave in physical form. He's going to the cross. From the cross, he's going to ascend back to heaven. But he has a concern and the concerns resonate in this prayer because when we pray, we pray for our concerns. We pray for the things that concern us, the things that we see, the things that we need and request that God does for us. And so Jesus models that in this prayer, but he also shares um, what he wants to see in the church. When you pray, you pray for what you want to see, what you want to be manifested, what you want to be um, exemplified. And so he prays for the church. He prays for the believers. He prays for the apostles. And he prays several things that we've talked about. He prayed, first of all, that they be kept from the evil of the world. He prays, secondly, that they are sanctified. And in this last portion of the prayer, he prays for unity. And when you read this prayer, you understand why Satan works overtime, double time, triple time to create disunity and disconnection among believers because it's the unity of the faith and it's the unity of the heart of believers that create such powerful results that any time the enemy can undermine our connection. Anytime the enemy can create confusion, anytime the enemy can create discord among the people of God, whether it's among the saints or among the clergy or among churches or among family members or among co-workers or colleagues, because Satan knows that when the people of God operate together, we operate in the power of God. We operate in the mind of God. And we literally become limitless in our capacity to do the work of God. We become limitless in our prayer life. Hallelujah. We, that, that, that's why, if I could be honest, that's why the devil sends the spammers and the scammers into our prayer meeting. Because he wants to distract us. So he sends the little scammers to offer us money through Cash App, all because that takes our attention away from what we're trying to do. Because he knows that when you get 70, 80, 100 people coming together in prayer, God is working us in the midst of our prayer. So he wants to do whatever he can to divide, to distract, to remove us from the mindset of unity. So Jesus prays for the unity of the church. He prays for the unity, listen to me. He prays for the unity of the church because the unity of the church is a reflection of the oneness that he enjoys with the Father. Look at what he says in verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which should believe on me through thy, through their word, that they all, they all, they all, they all may be one. 
He is not praying for any outsiders. He's not praying for people to be lone rangers. He's not praying for people to be lonely agents, but he's praying that they all may be one. Hallelujah. That the entire body of Christ, the totality of the church, the totality of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that the kingdom may be one. Why? Because thou art in me and I in thee, that they may also may be one in us. He wants us as united as he is with the father. You, the, now, when you read the scripture, and you see the operation of God, and you see the character of God, you really don't see any delineation between Jesus Christ and the Father. They are one. You can't separate them. You can't divide them. You can't dissect them. If you look at Jesus, you look at the Father. If you look at the Father, you look at Jesus, and he wants that same unity to exist in the body of Christ, that he wants to see one church, not a scattering of individual mindsets and mentalities and thoughts and persuasions, but he wants to see one church. That's why whatever the devil can create discord. Wherever he can create confusion, he dilutes the power. And so the Lord is saying that I need the church to be one. Why? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The world doesn't believe in Jesus. And it's not because they've met Jesus. The world doesn't believe in Jesus because they've met the church. And they have met a divisive. They have met a divided. They have met a dysfunctional. They have met an oppositional. They have met a, comp a competitive driven. They have met a personality driven church. They have not met the church of Jesus Christ that is united in the glory and the power and the faith that is in God. Hallelujah. He says, I want them to be one that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Hallelujah. And yes, when the Holy Ghost is working in all of us, the Holy Ghost unifies the church. It took unity for the Holy Ghost to be outpoured on the day of Pentecost. And it takes unity for the Holy for, for, the, for the church to operate in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when we understand that when we come together now, to come together does not mean to compromise. To come together does not mean to compromise. We do not have to give up biblical values. In fact, it's the biblical values that should unite us because the Bible says we ought to walk by the same rule and mind the same things. And when the Holy Ghost is allowed to speak and when the word is allowed to speak, it brings unity into the body of Christ. So the reason why we are so divided is because we keep injecting our opinion, our thoughts, our mentalities, what somebody told us, what we heard somewhere else, a tape or a book that we read, and we inject that into our faith. But when you go by the word of God, when you go by the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is leading you, when the Holy Spirit is directing you, it's impossible for us to be divided. Because the Holy Spirit unites us. By one spirit, by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body. And if we are going to operate in the power and the presence of God, we have to operate in the unity of the spirit. Paul said endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Are we working to keep this, the body of Christ unified? Are we laboring? Are we endeavoring? Are we struggling, striving to keep the body of Christ united? Or is everybody just simply out to do it their own way? Is everybody just simply out to operate in their own mind? Is everybody just simply out? And a lot of this, if I can be very honest, is that we have people who are trying to use God's church to glorify themselves. And they divide the church because they want to be the center of attention. They want to be the center of activity. They want to be glorified in themselves. The church was not made for your glory as an individual. The church was made for the glory of Jesus Christ. 
It was not made for me to engrandize myself. It was not made for me to lift up myself. The church was made for Jesus Christ to be lifted up and for Jesus Christ to be glorified. And that's why Jesus says, I in them. Let's look at this, verse 23. And thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. It's the unity that perfects us. It's the unity that matures us. It's the unity that lifts us higher. Oh God, when we come together, everybody goes higher. When we come together, everybody gets raised up. When we come together, everybody is empowered because there's a flow of the anointing that comes only when the body of Christ and the church of God is unified. There is a flow. There is an anointing. There is a presence that comes when the church is united in Jesus Christ. Jesus in the Father, the Father in Jesus, and the church in them. The church in the presence of God, that the world may know that thou hast sent me. When the world sees the church operating in unity, no matter what they eat, we call ourselves, no matter what banner we fly, but the main banner we fly is the banner of Jesus Christ. And when we all come under that banner and we all become led by that spirit and we all are led by that power. We see the manifestation of the glory of God in such a way, oh God, that he is exalted. Father, I will that they also, I'm praying that they also, which thou hast given me, be where I am. If we are going to be where Jesus is, we've got to go as a unified church. We've got to go as one church. Hallelujah. Because we're not going to heaven with all of these divisions. He's not coming for churches. He's coming for a church, singular. He's not coming for Baptist, Methodist, Holiness, Pentecostal, Lutheran. He's coming for one church. He's not coming for Cool JC, Bible Way, Way of the Cross. He's coming for one church. Read your Bible. He's coming for one church. One church. And if we're going to experience the glory that awaits us, my friends, oh, hallelujah, then we have got to be a part of that one church. Because he said, because thou has loved me from the foundation of the world. Oh, righteous father, the world has not known me. World never knew Jesus. World never understood Jesus. World never embraced Jesus. But the believers embrace him. Oh, hallelujah. And I have declared unto them, the Lord said, I didn't come to preach myself. I came to preach you. I came to declare you. Oh, God. And, and this is what makes the unity of the church work is the very last verse, verse 26. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them. Hallelujah. The same love, oh God, that Jesus has for the Father and that the Father has for Jesus. That same love, he is praying that that love be in us. And when that love in us is in us, then we operate in unity. Most people are not united because we don't genuinely love each other. I know we say it. I know we speak it. I know we articulate it in our gatherings, but real love is demonstrated. Real love is manifested. Real love is hallelujah, demonstrated. It's exemplified. You just can't speak love. You've got to act in love because acting in love maintains the unity because acting in love says you matter to me. Acting in love says you belong here. Oh God, maybe you've got faults, but I've got faults. Maybe you've got 
hangups. I've got hangups. But we're going to love each other. Oh, God, through our struggles. We're going to love each other through our dysfunctions. We're going to love each other through our difficulties. We're going to love each other. Oh, God, because love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers a multitude of faults. Love covers, oh, God, when I want to reject, when I want to step away, when I want to give up. It's the love of God that constrains me. When the Lord wanted to throw us away because of our hard-headed, disobedient mindsets, it was his love for us that kept him reaching for us. And that's the love, saints, that's going to bring the unity. When we love each other like Christ has loved us, when we love each other like Christ has shown his love for the Father, then we will see his love manifested in us, and then we will have unity. Church, the Lord is praying. The Lord is praying for the church to be unified. I preached a message from this text years ago. Who will answer the prayer of Jesus Christ? He prayed to the Father, but it's recorded for us because we should be laboring to love and to unify his body. Because when the body of Christ is unified, the body of Christ is empowered. One can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000 to a flight. If any two of you will agree as touching anything, oh God, when you join with other believers, you raise the power of God exponentially. Hallelujah. Let's join together now in prayer. Oh, Shatana Lobo Satanae. Oh, Katana Lobo Siatae Shanama Satae. Lord, I need you right now. I love you. I thank you. I honor you. I adore you. Hallelujah. I praise you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love, for your continued kindness. I thank you, Lord, that I'm a part of your body. Did not deserve it, did not earn it, did not merit it, but Lord, I'm a part of your body. And I thank you. Oh, Kataye Shanama Sete. I thank you, God, for being connected with your body. I thank you for the Holy Ghost that has placed us, oh my God, in the body of Christ. By one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And God, I thank you for being in that one body. Lord, I thank you, Ashatana, for my brothers and sisters. Oh, God, who have joined with me this morning in prayer. Oh, God, Ishataye, you're glorified by the fact, oh, God, that each day we come together. Lord, from different places, different localities, different countries, God, but we come together in prayer because we're united by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that is moving, oh, Shataye, through the internet, moving, oh, God, through Facebook Live, moving among the people right now because you've come, oh, God, because we're together today. And God, I'm praying right now. Oh, God, that unity would be manifested among each of us. God, I'm praying, oh, God, that we would be connected and united. So many things come, my God, to tear us apart. Lord, but we understand, oh, God, the challenge of unity this morning. We understand the power that comes when two or three gather in your name. We understand the power that comes when we agree concerning anything. We understand the power when we unite ourselves, oh God, in our common faith in you. And so, Lord, we bring ourselves together today. Oh, gosh, oh God, we love oh one another. We love each other today. And it's that love and it's that anointing that brings us together. And Lord, because we're together this morning in prayer, my God, we're reaching out to you, Lord, to minister to the needs that are on this line. Lord, everybody that came on this call, everybody that's come 
to this prayer me meeting, oh God, has brought a need. They've brought a problem. They've brought an affliction. They've brought a concern. If it's not for them, it's for somebody they love. Oh God, somebody they care about. Somebody that said, pray for me. But we lift them all up to you. And you said, Lord, if we would agree, oh God, that you would be in our midst. God, you're in our midst right now. We feel your presence. We feel your anointing. We feel the glory of God. We feel the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. So God, thank you for your power right now. Thank you for your glory. God, that is about to be revealed. So, God, I'm praying now that you would step into our midst, that you would magnify yourself, that you would glorify yourself. My God, look on the various prayer requests. God, look on the sick this morning. We pray for Brother Gary today. God, that you would touch his body. We pray for Maurice. My God, we're praying for Mother Jenkins right now, that you would touch and heal her. God, we're praying for Minister Allen my God, that you would touch and heal his body. We're praying for Mother Tanaj. We're praying for Mother Holman. We're praying, oh God, for Missionary Simmons today. My God, we're praying, oh, shout out for Mother Foster. We're praying, oh God, for Mother Carter, for every, oh God, we're praying for Mother Clark today. My God, you are a healer. My God, God, you are and we believe together, Lord, for healing. We're praying for Maria today. We're praying for Sesame and Samson. We're praying, my God, for everyone that is sick and afflicted today. We're praying for COVID victims everywhere. My God, we're praying for every name that's appeared, oh God, in the chat. Oh God, if I didn't call the name, you saw the name, and we're praying for them now. God, bring deliverance and bring healing right now. Oh God, we're praying for Apostle Kramer. Oh, God, we're praying for the people of God everywhere. In the name of Jesus, we're praying, my God, for the bereaved and the grieving. Lord, remember the Taylor family, God. Remember them in a special way. Remember the Brian Hopkins family. Remember the Dykes family, God. Remember, my God, oh, God, the Anderson family. And, God, the oh, God, the thousands of people touched by the life of Mother Anderson. God, remember, oh, Shatalayeshe, oh, God, the Washington Fields family, God. Remember them in a special way, God. Remember, Lord God, those that stand in need, oh God, oh God, of comfort today. Remember the McLean Melvin family. God, remember every soul that's grieving, every soul that's crying. Thank you, God, for the comfort of the Holy Ghost. And now, God, I'm praying, oh God, for the body of Christ. I'm praying, God, that you would unify us because the enemy wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy everything you created. He wants to destroy churches and ministries. He wants to destroy families and marriages. Marriages. He wants to destroy relationships and fellowships. But we plead the blood today and we ask you, God, to help us to love Ashataye until we unify ourselves in the spirit. To love, my God, until we become one in heart and one in mind. To love, God, until we forgive and reconcile. To love, God, until we overcome our obstacles and our differences. To love, my God, until we become one in the spirit so that the world will believe on you. God, we need you to help us today. God, we need you to help us, God. Oh, oh God, Lord, take out the hatred. Take out the malice. Take out the jealousy. Take out those things that divide us. Take out those things, oh God, that separate us. And Lord, bring us together by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring us together by your Spirit. God, bless, Lord. So many saints are going through so many different things. But God, we join together at this critical moment in prayer and we pray for deliverance God. Oh God, look on Michael today God. Oh Shatana Oh God, look on Rhonda today God. Oh God, bring deliverance now. Lord God, open up doors. Open up doors. Make ways my God. Lord turn things around God. We believe you for the turnaround today. Oh God, as many begin the work week of the new year I'm praying that you would cover them. I'm praying that you would protect them from death. Danger. I'm praying that you would keep them from the hand of the enemy. Lord, whether they're working from home or working outside, Lord, protect and cover them. Lord, remember, oh God, our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, oh God, our orderlies, our cafeteria workers, our dietitians, my God, our clinicians, God, cover and protect them. Lord, remember teachers and children, whether they're learning or working from home or going into a classroom, God, cover and protect them. God, remember the homeless today. Oh God, remember 
Remember the needy today. Oh God, somebody needs a miracle for their lives. Somebody needs their rent paid. Somebody needs, oh hallelujah, their light bill paid. Somebody needs food today. But God, you're the supplier. And God, as we have opportunity, let us act in faith to bless those that might find themselves in need. Oh God, give us the same love and care for one another in the body. God, give us compassion for each other in the body. Lord, give us mercy for each other in the body. God, give us love for each other in the body. Lord, because you're one body, Jesus. And we are one body in you, God. So God, refresh us. Remember the entire body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, every bishop, elder, mother, missionary, young person, psalmist, oh, Shanaye, teacher, leader, Gatanaye, disciple, deacon, follower, remember us all, God. Lord, save and deliver Jesus. We pray for our unsaved family today. We pray for our backslidden family today. We pray, oh God, for dysfunctional relationships today. We pray for disconnected hearts today, God. Lord, as you prayed for unity, God, we cry out for unity today, Jesus. Oh God, make us one in you, God. Make us one in you, God. And make us a part of that unifying process that we not act in ourselves, but we act that you might be glorified, that we not act selfishly, that we not minister selfishly, that we not teach and preach selfishly, but we preach and teach in the unity of the faith. Oh God, in the collection, oh God, that we stop glorifying ourselves, but Lord, that we let you give the glory. Oh, Shatanaye, Shanamasete, you give the glory, God. You get the glory, God. You get the glory. Oh, Shania Rabo Satanaye. You get the glory, God. Oh, Shanaye Masitaye. Lord, you manifest yourself in us. Glorify yourself through the church. Lord, that when you come for us, we can be where you are. When you come to rapture us, God, we can be with you, my God, when you come. So thank you, God, for what's going to be a fruitful and a productive and a blessed day. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, gosh, I tell you for what you're going to do for us. And Lord, as you do all of these things, we give your name the praise and we thank you for this and so much more. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Somebody give God the praise. Somebody give God the praise. Somebody give God the praise. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 my savior. Hallelujah. 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 Oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, Katare Shaniarabasi, Ataye. Hey, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Shataye Shamasia. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. This, this is my prayer. This is my declaration today. Jesus, help me to be a part of the unity of your church. Jesus, help me to be a part of the unity of your church. Lord, let me be a part. Let me be the example. Let me be the role model. Let me be the lover. Let me be the unifier. Let me be part of, hallelujah, the unity of your church. Hallelujah. Imagine if each of us would act in that mindset, act in that fashion, act in that mentality, that God uses us, hallelujah, to unify the church. Hallelujah, uses us. You talk about power, you talk about deliverance, 
You talk about answered prayers. When we act in unity, we create the environment whereby God can magnify himself through us, where God can lift himself through us, where God can show himself, hallelujah, through us. Oh God, just act in unity, saints. Just act in unity. Just act in unity. Just act in unity. And we will see, hallelujah, the glory of God. We will see the power and the presence of God. Hallelujah. We will see. Don't be ignorant. That's why Satan works overtime to keep us at odds. Because when we are united, he is defeated. Oh God, when we are united, <clears throat> he is defeated. My God, God bless you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this prayer. Thank you for the unity that I feel now on this call. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters, and go and have a productive day. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day long. This service, this prayer meeting will be on Facebook Live, it'll, on our Facebook page, rather. It'll also be on our YouTube channel that you can go back and watch it. You can tell other people about it and share. You can share from our um, podcast, which are at Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud. You can join our radio broadcast today, which airs every day at 11.30 a.m. at GregoryGospel.com. GregoryGospel.com. You can join us in the radio broadcast. And once again, share it with somebody. Somebody you know needs to be encouraged. Somebody you know needs to be strengthened. Just share the word. Tell them to join and be a part. Invite them to prayer to be a part of what God is doing for us each morning at 630 in the name of Jesus Christ. But the Lord is going to bless us because we're going to be united. Hallelujah. One can chase a thousand. Two can put 10,000 to a flight. Yes, Missionary Johnson. When we are united, the devil is defeated. Oh God, his plans are averted. His plans are up overturned because we are united. Let's pray everybody for God's work and his power in our lives. You can um, sow into Refuge Temple. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. Or you can give online which is simply our website, which is refugetemplenc.com, refugetemplen, as in North, C as in Carolina, dot com, or our cash app, which is just simply dollar sign, the number one refuge. God bless you today. Thank God for each of you. Let's have a wonderful, productive day, and the blessings of God be upon you. Until tomorrow morning at 6.30, this is Pastor Reginald Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.